Hi, you guys. It's Lene with the reveal of the uh, Scrapping for Less Flavor of the Month card kit for October. And this month, I don't have a traditional unboxing video. Instead, I'm going to be showing you the contents of the kit before I make each card. So this is collection number one, the holiday flowers. The theme this month is Christmas around the world. It's so, so cool. So collection one, the theme is Mexican holiday. So there's that little stamp set these gorgeous papers, and I was really attracted to these poinsettias, and I thought that I would just use my scissors and trim out around them, leaving a small green border, and then this would be like the focal point of my card. Look at all these gorgeous holiday flowers papers by Scrapping for Less. I had a hard time deciding which pattern I wanted for my background. I almost went with this lace piece, but in the end, I'm going to go with this kind of rustic wood grain pattern. I love how the dark brown really plays off of the uh, the kind of pinkish red of the flowers. So I'm just going to add some liquid glue and add this onto the bottom of my card base. And I'm leaving just a little bit of space because I wanted to add the ribbon at the bottom to kind of create a border to ground everything. But if I was to just place the ribbon over the flower border at the bottom, it kind of covered up the centers of the flowers. And I didn't like the way that it made that look choppy. So I added it a little bit up from the bottom of the card. Then I'm going to add some liquid adhesive. I'm using iCraft Ultra Bond liquid adhesive. This is going to make sure that my ribbon does not move even a hair. I glued that on and now I'm using the stamp set in the first collection. This one is Mexican Holiday by Scrapping for Less. I'm using the sentiment Feliz Navidad and I'm just going to use my anti-static powder tool I'll stamp it with some Versamark ink and heat emboss with fine detail white embossing powder. And that is really it for this first card. I played around with adding a bow, but it made the card look bulky. So I just decided to use some of these enamel dots by Gina Marie Designs. They're kind of like a rusty red color. And so I went and just added them to the center of my flowers. They're super glittery and pretty. I used both the small and the medium sizes. I'll just add them to the centers of my flowers there, and that is going to finish this card. All of the cards that I created today are pretty simple, but when I create Christmas cards, I like to have simple cards because you can easily mass produce a design, or even like this one where you only have single pieces of paper and this is a one-off card. I like it to be simple so I can sit down and maybe make 10 or 15 Christmas cards that are elegant but simple and I can do it all in one evening. So this is collection two. This is the Australian Christmas collection. So it has this Surfing Santa stamp set by Sunny Studio Stamps. There are the Australian Christmas papers by Scrapping for Less. There's little flag bits that I think are meant to go around those uh, wooden sticks. And then there are the papers, there's um, a card to cover, a card to color by Kaiser Craft. I'll be honest, the card intimidated me a bit, but I think I'm going to take it one of these days when my son has a play date and color it in while I'm sitting there uh, with him. So I wanted to use this striped pattern paper as my color inspiration. I usually stick to traditional Christmas colors. Occasionally, I will branch out into pink and mint for Christmas, but I don't think I have ever brought in yellow for a Christmas card. So this paper was really inspiring to me, and I thought that the yellow gave like a hint of sunshine. And since this is the Australian Christmas theme, I thought that would be perfect. So I just colored in the images from the Surfing Santa stamp set with my Copic markers, and then I started working on my actual card. So these little flag banners come in the kit and I thought about just using them, but I didn't really feel like the colors played off of what I wanted my card to be. So instead, I'm just going to trim down little banner sized pieces of cardstock of the pattern paper from the kit. This gorgeous striped pattern that I used as my color inspiration for my images is going to be my background. And then you can see here all of my little strips. I love this one with the Christmas colored beach houses. And then there's little anchors and everything. Things that you wouldn't think of as Christmas patterns. But I love that this kit 
is Christmas around the world. So you see colors that you're not expecting here in the U.S. and you see patterns like anchors and stuff that you wouldn't normally equate with Christmas. And it really stretched my imagination. So I'm just going to cut down all these patterns of paper into various banner ends. Some of them are doing the traditional cut up the center and then from each end to the center to create that flag. And then some of them I just cut at a diagonal. So here is my tip for adhering all these banners together. I used my grid mat and got them straight and kind of where I wanted them to go. And then I'm using a piece of purple tape to pick them all up at once. Now I can go ahead and add my adhesive, whether it be a foam adhesive like I'm using here, or even if you wanted to just use regular liquid adhesive and adhere it all down flat. I wanted this to have some dimension. So on the pieces that are going to be at the back, which is the very top and the very bottom piece that you see, those are just gonna have a single layer of foam tape, but then I am going to double up the foam tape in on that middle one so that every step of these flags is going to have a little bit more dimension than the last. So I'm going to double that up there. And now I have, you can see, single layers of foam adhesive on the two very bottom pieces and a double layer on that one that's going to be kind of in that middle but in the back from those small strips. Because my purple tape is holding everything together, I can just pick it up all at once and adhere it down. And look at that, so easy. All I have to do is flip around to the card and just trim the excess off of the back. I'm going to be adding my Sansa and surfboard images onto the card using uh, foam adhesive. And I did have a double layer in places and a triple layer in other places. I stamped the warm Christmas wishes on a piece of white cardstock, trimmed the it into a flag banner end, and then I added that in the top left corner of my card with one layer of foam adhesive. I'm gonna add some clear glitter onto the Santa and surfboard, and this card will be complete. So let's move on to my card for collection three. And actually, I created two cards with this collection. This one has some sequins, and then there's the stamp set, A Swedish Christmas by Scrapping for Less. The Nordic winter papers are so pretty. I love the snowflakes. I love that there's this deep blue color and then that kind of like tomato-y red. There is some twine by Doris. And then there are some little cardstock cutouts by Pink Paisley. And I do believe that people will be getting different ones of these. Usually when Scrapping for Less does the cardstock cutouts, everybody gets a different one. So you kind of get a little taste of what that collection would be like. For this uh, card, I'm going to be using just those cardstock cutouts. I'm not gonna be using the stamp set. I was really drawn to the gold foil on the tree and I really loved that silent night ornament piece. So I'm going to be doing two cards, one with each of these. I die cut a couple of white frames. I used the pink and main reverse scalloped rectangle and reverse scalloped circle die set for this. These dies are probably my most used dies. I think I use them even more than like regular stitched rectangle dies because I love the frame that these give and they are perfectly sized for cards. So I just cut them from some white cardstock I glued them onto the pattern papers that I wanted to use. This red one is going to be for that tree cardstock piece, and that dark blue one with the snowflakes is going to be for that ornament. I trimmed around them with my scissors so that I could have that cardstock background. And then I'm going to just add my little bits and bobs onto my card. So I added it with some foam tape for some dimension, and I'm just going to add them right in the center of each of the cards. I did end up adding a second piece of the pattern paper behind that square card, the Silent Night one. But for the Christmas tree one, I just went ahead and had that cover my whole card base. I really love that pop of white with the frame. To finish off my square card with the ornament, I'm going to take this twine that comes in this kit and I will just fold it in half and cut it so that I have two lengths that are the same. And then I'm going to fold it into, or rather tie it into a bow, and I'll add that to the top of my ornament. I'll finish off each of these cards by gluing down some of the sequins. And I love that the sequin mix in this collection is 
a true mix. There are like little snowflake sequins, there's larger clear ones, and then smaller white ones. I think these look fantastic with these cards. These are some of my favorites. Collection four is the German uh, collection. So this is the O Tannenbaum stamp set by Scrapping for Less. There are these foil mates and foil by Gina K Designs and Thermal Web, and I'll be showing you exactly how to use those. I love to foil. Um, Thermal Web is one of my favorite companies, and their products are so fabulous and so, so easy to use. But I get a lot of questions about how to use foil and with toner sheets. So here's my laminator. I have an inexpensive $20 laminator from Scotch. I think I got it at Target. And this kit comes with everything you need to do some foiling. This is that fancy, um, fancy foil sheet. And so you're just going to add that into the carrier sheet, which is basically a piece of parchment paper. You wanna put it folded side into your laminator. So my sandwich is that parchment paper, then the foil mates, and then the foil on top. And you want the foil to be covering any part that has that black laser printed part because that is what's going to foil. I ran it through my laminator twice just to be sure everything would transfer and check this out. Anywhere that there was that black print on this card is now gold foiled. And I am actually going to use the negative piece because when I do foiling, I don't leave anything behind. So that first piece with the foil on the foil mates is pretty much done. I did trim around that with my scissors, but now I want to use up this extra piece. So I covered a piece of cardstock with some Stick It adhesive. So it's just double-sided, uh, basically like a tape runner adhesive, but it's a full sheet of stick. And I covered a little piece of cardstock with that foil. And then I just rubbed it in with my fingers really well. You don't want to use your bone folder on the front. You could flip it over and use your bone folder on the back. But I prefer to just use like my sleeve or my fingers just to smooth that out. And then I'm going to trim around this just like I did for my positive piece. So that piece that's laying on my desk, that's what you actually get when you do foiling. You foil a piece of toner paper or something like that, and you have that image as a result. This is just an extra bonus step that I like to do because I don't like to waste anything. And I think that this is just as pretty as the positive piece. So here we go. We're just going to make two cards here. I loved this reindeer background. It almost looks glittery without being glittery. So I'm going to trim this down to four and an eighth by four and an eighth. This is gonna be another square card and I'll just have a small white border from my card around that. My other pieces are going to measure uh, to be a regular A2 size card. This little piece of plaid I actually had left over from my sneak card, but it worked out just perfectly to layer like this. I'm using the red cardstock from the kit, and then that dark green paper is the back side of one of the pattern papers from this collection. I'm adding a double layer of fun foam to the back of my foiled cutout images, and then I'm going to add them right in the center for my square card and at the top center for my regular A2 sized card. These cranberry stickles come in the banana split level kit. You get an extra little goodie bag of embellishments and there's a stamp set in there as well and a die set. And this worked out perfectly. I'm just gonna go around with these cranberry stickles and add little pops of glittery red to those little berries on the wreath. Really easy to do, and I think that it really adds a nice pop of color and some extra glitter and shine. So here are my finished two cards from collection four, and check that out. Look at that gold foiling and that dimension from the stickles. These are definitely some of my favorite cards from this kit as well. This whole kit had some fabulous elements, and I really like the cards that I made from this kit. So let's take a look at all of the cards that I made starting with the card from the first collection where I cut out those flowers at the bottom and made a border with that. As I go through these cards, I hope that you will leave me a comment down below and just tell me which one is your favorite card. I'd love to know because it always makes my heart happy when a card that I think, oh, maybe I shouldn't have added that is one of your favorites. I love that as card makers, we all have different tastes. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Bye.